everybody. Welcome back. I'm so excited to be talking today with Coach Bria. She is a certified transformational healing coach, a spiritual mentor, a best-selling author, and she's got this amazing podcast you should check out. I'll leave the link in the description below, the Transformational Healing Podcast. So welcome. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so, so glad that we are reconnected again. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's been over a year since we've connected. But today we're going to talk about something a little different. Last time I think we talked about COVID and then like how it was for you to move to California from your native country. And today we're talking more about loving and disliking being single. Right? Mm, sounds fun. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think, I don't know about you, but I hear single people, they either love it or they seem to hate being single. So tell me a little bit about like how long have you been single? What's your experience been? Well, um, how do you come to be single? So I've been divorced is 12 years ago. And through that to now, I have a couple uh, three years, four years relationship, then then go back, then have a, you know, shared fate. Now I'm single, I don't have anybody with me now. So this been about a few years, like a I told you last time, I think I shared with you, I was traveling for two, three years, mm -hmm. then come back in the COVID. I was a date for a little bit, just did it once for six, seven months. Then now I've been, I didn't date anybody, just focus on my life about a year. So is that I come to single for 12 years or for a year? <laughs> I guess it depends on who you're talking to. Like, I think, I don't know. I usually count single being like last time I got out of any kind of serious relationship, but mm. everyone's got their own definition, right? Which is kind of the fun part as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I got out of my longer relationship. That was three years. A wonderful relationship is in 2017. It's kind of be well. <laughs> so how have you, when you get out of your relationships, how do you do your own healing work? Because this is one thing is I think sometimes we can get wanting to jump into another relationship or we're hurt, and we're heartbroken. So what are some of the tools or techniques that maybe you could share with our listeners that might be helpful for them? Well, thank you for asking, beautiful. I think uh, the, my really last uh, relationship was the transform for me now become really enjoy, uh, no matter it's a single or waste relationship. But before, you know, we go through uh, some relationship, I think uh, most of the important things is define the who I am. Before, when I was in my marriage or uh, in the relationship, I try to be someone else. Mm -hmm. That, you see, it doesn't work. And because I didn't know who I am, what I really wanted, I think uh, that the partner will be misunderstanding also than looking for the people probably not looking for the right person. Now I've said they are not good, they are great. It's just we are, I'm different. Mm -hmm. I think now after the last relationship, I really learned discovering who I am, take my time to really look inside myself then really start falling in love with myself, not another people, not the man is falling in love with myself. Now I'm looking for a relationship. It's not basic for they to bring the happiness to me. I think it's because I already have this love, happiness, I want to share with my partner. Yeah, I love that. You know, it's interesting. What you said triggered something in me um, because I think a lot of us say these words like, oh, I had to find myself or I, was, or I wasn't myself in that relationship. And I don't know about you, but when I'm in a relationship or even sometimes like now, like I think I'm being myself, I think I am who I am. So how do we know if we're in a relationship perhaps that we're not mm. true to who we are? Like what was, do you have a sense of what was evident or was it later looking back that you were like, oh yeah, I totally wasn't being myself. Wow, when you say that, I think I got a goose bump, you know. <laughs> yes, I think we are in the relationship, just like we are in sometimes in the sense you cannot see what is outside. 
So I think I was before in the relationship, not myself, not look back. I'm more clear, definitely that's not my true self. Because we grew up, it depend how the environment you grew up, how do you triggered, how is the trauma, because when you don't heal with yourself, you didn't understand where's the trigger, where's the trauma cause. So how do you can be yourself, right? You're just struggling, swing with that emotions until you, the day you have to say, no, this doesn't work. I need to see something different. I think like a, I talked about it before, I didn't know I shared with you. I really, I married twice, a Chinese man, and the American man, but they are same, same person. <laughs> right. You know, I fall. I, I was married to the man. It's the same thing because uh, that uh, come back look like it's not about them. It's about me because I'm keep a track in same person. No matter it's Chinese culture, or American culture, you know. Right. And that's such a good point because I mean, that does happen, right? I hear women and men say like, oh God, I just, it's a sin. why do I keep attracting men that are like this? Why do I keep attracting women that are like that? And it does, it come from how did we learn to be in relationship? What do we believe or how do we hold ourselves? You know, where do our, um, where does our brain in essence find safety in a relationship? And it's with something that's familiar, even if it's quote unquote dysfunctional, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. that's all our brain wants is safety and support and love <laughs> in a certain way. Yes. I think uh, also it's, uh, it's the boundary. It's really important to set up the boundary. So when you understand, okay, this is my boundary, I need to hold on. If you cannot hold uh, your boundary or don't understand your boundary, then you will be feel lost the balance. When yeah. you feel lost balance, you feel unworthy, not be loved, not appreciate that negative emotion, even defense start to build the wall getting bigger and bigger until you boom, explode. <laughs> yeah. Why? How do you, how do you or your clients know when your boundaries are not being held? Like what are some signs or some warning signs that you've seen or that you experienced that you could help share with other people that might be helpful? Yes, I think uh, that is as I grew older, I go through the more experience. Now I really know, like a last relationship, I I quickly end just a few months because mm -hmm. I already know that is my boundary. Because you know, when you meet the new people, you are so excited. You both want to bring the best in there, right? Mm. But as go through with a couple months, then you know. Like, uh, I'm always focused with self growth, uh, awareness, really, I understand how to express my feelings, can I hold it there? So I will be said, um, tell them my partner, oh, if you do this, I will feel beloved, like a love language, you know, about the five love language, right? Like, uh, my first language is add of my affirmation. Because I grew up with be abandoned, that the feeling not good enough, always showing up. If my partner can tell me, say, I'm so proud of you, that make me feel that, wow, I be loved, supported, mm -hmm. right? But uh, if I find the partner, then he's not that language. He's, I remember last relationship, I was telling him, I said, I want you to tell me you love me. Um, then he will be tell me, I said, that will be make, make me feel beloved, be encouraged. Then he will say, you cannot tell me to tell you I love you. I have to just tell you when I feel like, I said, well, that means if you don't, I didn't hear you, that means you never feel like you love me. So what is the point we are together? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Right? So then that uh, I told him, then gave a suggestion. So that's how make me feel good. I feel loved. Then I ask him, tell me how I can make you feel appreciated, be loved. Then he said, you just have to find, uh, figure out. So that I know is the boundary. Mm -hmm. 
I cannot be with someone not the uh, communication open heart. Then later on, uh, not later on, so I understand like uh, he still have a lot of issues with the family. We do have a lot of issues with family, but he haven't talked with the parents or father for 20 years. So if someone hold that sense for 20 years, you can see how much it open. Yeah. So that I talk about the boundaries. Right, right. Yeah. Not really giving in, knowing what you need and being really clear about it. I saw a statistic once. It's been a long time, but it was something like something along the lines of single people usually know within two weeks of dating someone whether they should stay in the relationship or not. And most people wait two years to 20 years sometimes, you know, to get oh, out, yes. right? Because Absolutely. we don't listen to that. We're like, well, maybe we should give them a chance or maybe it's nice to have someone around or whatever words we use with ourselves. Yeah. I do think usually in the two, three weeks, you can sense something, but sometimes you're still a little bit longer because you want to make sure is that really, so that's why. And as, be honest, sometimes the sex, be, because it's so good, that keep you, keep yeah. that also, right? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so it's yeah. all of different reasons. <laughs> so true, so true. So can I ask you a question? Do you feel lonely ever being single? You know, so I, so interesting, when I was younger, I was single, I always feel lonely, always so craving want to find the partners. Mm -hmm. I think now, because I'm so busy, so much passion with my own time doing things, like I go to hike by myself, I can enjoy my music and writing things. I think as I'm more than more, like I said, in love with myself. Mm -hmm. So each my time I use wisely, I have less time feel lonely. Mm. I don't feel lonely, but I do want to share my joy or some, you know, companionship. I love, I miss that to share with someone. Yeah. And the hard case, that's what I miss it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And when you want that, like the touch needs and such, like how, is there a way that you, uh, move through that or how do you get those needs met when there's not a partner around uh without partner you you know myself yeah of course that i think is part of yourself self satisfaction mm -hmm. yes yeah yeah great so what other or what words of advice or anything do you want to give some of our single people out there who are maybe struggling a little bit with loneliness or not really sure what they should do, or even those that are in a relationship that are maybe a little bit afraid of like, oh my gosh, I haven't been single in so long. And what would it be like to be single? I hear all these scary online dating stories, you know? <laughs> There's a lot of people out so there like- You know, darling, I was, saying, uh, I was teaching, coaching my clients in relationship whilst my, my clients was uh, telling me, she said, Ria, you even single, how do you, teaching coaching relationship right i said well i think for me it's no matter you're single or you're in relationship it's how do you enjoy your life how you make your life more joyful if you are in, even you are in a relationship if you are not happy you're always holding some regret or you something you cannot be yourself mm -hmm. so what is the point with not relationship I love that. I love that. Any other final words before we let the audience go? I'm not sure I'm that ready to find the words to tell the single people, but uh, I'm, I want to say to be yourself. No matter you are in relationship and no relationship, be yourself to be authentic self, be happy, find something more fulfilling for you. When you vibrate with that joy, with the happiness, I think when you understand who you are, you will attract the people who's just drawing to you. Just like if you are the light, then people will draw into you, right? Yeah, yeah, such beautiful words. 
Lovely. Well, and all of you watching, comment below. Like, what are, what's your biggest takeaway from this video? What are you going to try in your own life to find more self-love and to shine more light so you can find your perfect partner, whatever that looks like for you? Or just enjoy, like you said, enjoy your single life. Yeah. Yeah, enjoy your single life. I'm doing a lot of solo traveling, all that stuff. I think get a lot of chance to meet people. It's great. Great. Right. Well, thank you again, Coach Ria, for being on. It's been such a pleasure. And you know, it's been at the end of most of my videos, I say, just remember that you are love, you are loving and you are lovable. Right. And I think that holds true for everybody. Oh, thank you. Yes. We all are lovable. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for inviting me to come to your podcast again. It's my honor to be yeah. here. You're very welcome. Okay. Bye-bye.